<clears throat> All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Whoever is here or whoever's watching this on the replay, thank you very much. Glad you're here. Glad people are here. This is going to be new again for me to start doing this. Um, so I'm definitely looking forward to doing that. Hope everybody could hear me okay. Hope there are no issues there um, on the volume. <clears throat> and again, this is just something new I want to start doing. Just want to start having something out there. Just start, you know, checking here. things out. Um, so, you know, first thing before we get into a lot of different stuff, I know Forex later today with uh, Ray, they're having their um, filibuster in about an hour. Um, so he'll be announcing the animal farm and about the date, which he pretty much said is going to be mid-October. So um, there has been a little bit of a pump and that kind of stuff. But before we get into that <clears throat> and why people are coming in, um, hold on a second, let me show here. Hey there, Zulun. If I'm saying that right, Zulun, Zulum. I don't want to say it incorrectly. Hi. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> but before we do and start getting into some of the other DeFi stuff, I want to cover some of the market stuff. I figure let's start with some of the overlaying top of the market. Let's start with some of the macro stuff um, and kind of work our way over to some of the crypto and DeFi and then just see where it goes. I love to have people's questions, think people things that people want, um, something new that I want to jump into here in DeFi and something I'm going to talk about um, with the project. The project's not new, but I've been watching and I hadn't jumped in on the last one. I didn't want to FOMO in. I think now is a good time to jump in. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, so, you know, that's where I, I'm at right now. Um, so, you know, with the markets, let me just pull up here for CNBC. We're just closing right now. Uh, the markets did try to open up today a little bit higher, but it didn't really work. Um, you know, the NASDAQ, this was all up a one to two percent pre-market open and it kind of gave it right back. And I've been saying that, you know, I did say and if people have been listening, especially in my Telegram group, shout out, definitely look to join a Telegram group. Um, but I've been saying that the bear market rally was a little bit overbought, just like it was oversold. It wasn't going to really last. That I was expecting it, saying it to happen in the month of August and the July, exactly when it started happening. I said around Labor Day, it was supposed to start losing steam and kind of head back down. We're here right now. Now, it's not it's not me. It's not like I'm some guru. It's just people I listen to and a lot of different stuff that's out there. I really follow and pick certain people and take piece of this, take piece of that and put it together and say, which part do I agree with? Which part do I not agree with? Where's the consensus? And that's where the consensus was. The consensus was for the market to be coming down. Um, and, you know, here we are. So, you know, today the markets closed down again. I'm going to show some of the stuff with the charts there. Oil I'm watching here. Yesterday I had a big run up. Today's back down 5%. This is something I'll be watching. I'm going to show it here. <clears throat> and I did share a video that was from my members. Um, you can see it on my channel here. And real quick, you know, shout out to everyone who is here. I uh, appreciate each and every one of you. Um, I do hope that we could help here. If you're new here or if you haven't been here before, you can see in the top right, there's a subscribe button. Definitely hit the subscribe. Hit the like button. Let's get the algorithm to get to some more people's hands. Let's let more people share and know about this. And again, I know this is going to start small. There's not going to be many people on here, but this is just something slowly but surely. I want to keep building, want to keep building. Um, because, you know, there's a lot out there. And, yeah, I get a lot of different feedback and a lot of trolls and a lot of hate and whatever. You know what? I really don't care. Um, I have some stuff I'm going to share with that another time later afterwards. But the bottom line is I appreciate all you onward and upward. I want to just to keep climbing. Let's get to that next level of 1100. Keep climbing from there. You know, that's what I'm looking for. So I appreciate any of you hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and also different ways to join the channel. I have here different ways you could join and support the channel. I'm trying not to do it through um, only looking through referrals through projects. Um, I have to do something very unique with that, with Furio that I want to talk about. So I'll give you an idea with that, but, you know, I'm not going to drop that just yet. But different ways to support. I mean, you can support for little as 10 cents a day. And I want to build something up with that, too, where I can have some kind of way of doing something or giving back or having, you know, random monthly um, airdrop prizes, that kind of stuff of just street, like USDC or something. Does it not even have to be of a project for those to subscribe and could be entered into that and other little ways to give back and make it feel worthwhile. And definitely... For the group here, you know, that's what I was talking about for my group here for Alpha. Um, I have a few between here and Patreon. So thank you for all of them, for all of you. And with that, what I've been doing is just saying, listen, this is what I'm doing. I don't give financial advice, but I have a lot of experience in trading, a lot of experience in the markets and macro. And I just want to show you trends and what I was doing. And it's just. And. Oh, we lost a second there. There we go. We came back um, to just show you what I'm personally doing. So I'm going to show you some of those here, and then I'm going to come back to it here in a second. So let me cut back over here. So the markets, as I was saying, 
Um, this is Lux Algo. This here was talking about that it was a time to take some profits when the markets were getting hot here. You can see this is August 10th. It was saying pretty much start selling or liquidating. This went up here to that range, which is a take, take profit zone, basically. And then a sell came in right here. And this is the NASDAQ triple Qs, NASDAQ QQQ. This is the NASDAQ 100. And the sell came in. And then this red here is another indicator, another sell. So these are different sell and buy indicators. These are one thing that I have turned on, and this is another I have turned on. So two things are confirming here to sell, but this came in a little bit later. And I said on Thursday, and I showed that I was shorting the NASDAQ. So what I did was I purchased this, the SQQQ. It's basically, it's an ETF that's 2X leveraged short of the NASDAQ 100. Um, and there's also a 2X leverage go long if you want to go long, or you can just do the regular, you know, as is. I don't like to buy options that expire and intrinsic value and all that stuff. Long, long can get into it. But the SQQQs have turned out to be a great call. Okay, you can see right here, a buy came on, a buy came on, which of course it should, just as the opposite of over here. And I'll show you how that's done so far. And another thing that I was talking about was the U.S. housing market. There's the Philly U.S. housing sector index. Um, and the same thing here. I felt, you know, this is right now, there's a lot going on in the economy, a like, lot going on in different things. And I felt, okay, this is the time that I think you're going to start seeing pullback. There are starting to, there's a lot of cracks being shown in the U.S. housing market. You know, maybe not in every local jurisdiction, but there is going on right now. I know the government basically has made up a new definition of what a recession means, but we've had two straight quarters of GDP um, decline, which technically by the book is a recession. And I think you all can agree we're in a recession. Inflation is still high. A lot of things still going on. And people are reducing prices or cutting prices. So I said, I think that as a whole here for a while, I also want to short the U.S. housing market and take advantage of that. And the way I've been doing that here is with this one, SRS. Same thing. SRS is from the same pro shares. It is a 2x leverage short of the U.S. housing market. The buy came in on the same time. I was watching this. The second indicator came in with a buy. So I now have two buys on that. And I've definitely gone long. Um, so that's great there. And very happy with that. So far, I'm going to show you that. Um, and then the last thing here on the macro side is, is oil. You know, oil right now has been, this is the U.S. oil. This is WTI crude West Texas Intermediate. That's what that stands for. You can trade it in different ways. I have different ways. And another same thing, 2x leverage that I trade. And it's kind of interesting because it went up a bunch yesterday because there was some news about some things, some macro things in Libya and some macro things that um, Saudi Arabia might make some cuts. And, you know, if you follow it deeply, you know, you can see, but I, I follow with all that. And they gave it right back today. But I do think right now that oil is going to be on the way swing, on the upswing again, um, going into the winter here. There's a big, huge oil shortage and energy prices in Europe and the UK. I know people are following from there. So I feel for you all for your prices or cuts and things are going on. So I could see oil touching up here again um, through the winter and through some of the shortages going on right now. So that's just my personal opinion. Um, let's go over, of course, to some of the crypto. Bitcoin was holding, hovering at that 20,000 range. Um, Lux Algo has it a strong sell. So I'm like, oh, that's interesting. This is just a trend line I had here. So they have it as a strong sell. It's kind of a line here. And there's some other people do way more or way better technical analysis. That's not what I'm here for only. I just want to show you that or give you that information. But this is going to have a huge impact on where DeFi and where things go. Because if the markets are going down and if things are going down with the market, Dow Jones as a P500, those kind of stuff, a lot of big money are in those. A lot of big money are in real estate. So they're going to start pulling and selling their risk assets. And a lot of crypto is considered a high risk asset. So they're going to start selling that. They're going to start pulling more off the table, putting more downward pressure. And I do feel there's more downward pressure. Um, ETH was up to 1800 back down to 15 You can see the prices here. BNB is definitely going to have an impact on a lot of things that are tied to BNB, especially like with Drip and some of the other ones that tied um, their token and their coin to it. You know, it's, it's it's hovering right now. There's 280s. We'll see where it's at. It's kind of sitting here. It's kind of going sideways. These purple candles basically means that the system is not sure yet which direction it's going. It's kind of it can go either way is what this is basically saying. Um, this down here and this going sideways could be what's called a bear flag. Bear flags do break to the downside. We'll see how that goes. Um, but that's just something to keep an eye on. And of course, I like ADA and those kind of things. So, you know. Strong sell. It's almost getting to the green where I think it might be a good place to buy. But I still think in all the, I think all this can go lower. And I honestly feel that the market still have a 20 to 40 percent downside um, coming from the highs that they've recently hit. So 
I feel that I do believe that going into the midterm elections, going into the end of the year. So just wanted to cover some of that stuff there for everyone. Um, and I want questions for everyone too. Give me some questions. Give me some information what you want. You know, somebody give me, you know, something here to go off of. You know, I'd love to chat. I'd love to have someone ask something. Um, but real quick, just to go a little bit of some crypto stuff, just wanted to just highlight here, just cover a little bit. Um, let's see what we got. We got top smart contract platform. ETH could dip below 1,000 before the merge. That is possible. I would love to buy some more ETH again under 1,000. I know when it, last time we had that pullback, it was sitting down about that 900 range or whatever. Um, it was doing pretty well. So, well, it wasn't doing well, but I was doing well purchasing it there, I should say. So I was very, very happy to be buying that there at those prices um, for sure. So if it goes back there again, I would definitely look at buy again. And one of the strategies I have is to basically accumulate a lot of this daily income from some of these daily DeFi projects. And then take that money and convert it into some of these top, you know, blue chip coins like ETH or Cardano or, you know, Bitcoin, um, you know, some of the other top ones that I, that I like that are looking at um, Matic, but not just yet. Um, you know, Sand, Sandbox, something long term, I think would look, you know, look pretty good, that kind of stuff. So those are the kind of ones I'm looking at or thinking about for long term um, to go into. And I know we're waiting here. You know, you got about 45 minutes to the, uh, you know, Forex if you're check, you know, checking with Anform and Drip. So that'll be coming about that time. So I figured I'd give you a little other info before that does arise. Um, digital assets could dip further. There's a lot of basically bear sentiment right now. So bear sentiment right now in the main coins, which means there could be some more downward pressure on our DeFi projects, people selling. That's the reason why I show this. That's the reason why I cover this. The reason why I do this is to let people know that that's a possibility to let people know that that can come and that's out there. Um, so, you know, if, if, if you see that kind of stuff, you can understand and go, okay, cool. You know, now I know where there may be some pressure from and where I might change some of my risk assets. And I really want to watch some of those charts. Uh, Cardano is a big one here. I keep talking about it and I'm accumulating Cardano. I like it long-term. This is pretty cool right here from coin telegraph. Um, it says Cardano actually outranks Bitcoin in global top intimate brands in a new report. That's crazy. So the blockchain developer ranks 26 out of 600 global brands in a new report. So it's really picking up here on its name, on its brand, brand recognition. It says here, blockchain developer represents crypto space with a top spot in a new report on global brand intimacy. Ranks 26 amongst 100, 600 brands. Um, let's see. Cord across 19 industries, crypto is among the top 10 performer with Cardano in the lead. So Cardano is actually the lead as a number one coin. Um, in this report here. So it's really making a move um, and really doing a lot of great things. And you can see here, Charles Hoskins, you know, the co-founder. So this is a lot there. And I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. And I'm glad I'm accumulating it little by little, dollar cross averaging. I think that'll be a huge long-term play with huge upside. Of course, never financial advice. I don't give financial advice. Not a financial advisor. Always do your own research. Always have the disclaimers. But there's a lot of positive things out there right now on that. So I just want to make sure we cover that and just go into that here. So now that we're kind of warming up a little bit, uh, we can look into some of the different things, some of the charts. So, of course, as you know, I do cover a lot with Drip and Animal Farm. I'm going to start covering some other projects. I'm going to share some of the other ones that I'm in and give you just my opinions right now <clears throat> and, you know, discuss some of the things I want to step into. Oh, and before I do that, actually, let me see which is the right one here. Here. So this here is what I just talked about. So for those who are looking to, to, to join or looking to add and what I was just talking about there, um, definitely want to give you an idea here. So look, SQQQ, this is why I bought it. This is from last Thursday. I'm up 22%. SRS, I'm up 11.5%. I was I put some money into eShare, BNB, because I wanted to see that. I might have been a little early, so I am down 9% right now, but I'm not worried about it. Um, and then I put a tiny little bit in the Grizzly. Just wanted to test it out and check out this new project. It's not new, but... You know, I have a theory and a new strategy I'm playing with. So I figure if I play this strategy, let's see how it goes. So these are just a little bit I put in here. Definitely, this is more of my regular trading and retirement account that I put bigger positions in here that I really feel happy with. So this one's down. These are doing really well. So again, just trying to show you, and I'm watching UCO right now. UCO is a 2x leverage on the upside of oil that I'm looking to take a position and jump in soon. So as soon as I do, I'm going to have that there. Um, but let me go back here now so we can go. Let's start with Drip. We go through Animal Farm, and then we'll work our way through. I don't want to take too much time with these because I know I, I probably beat these to death. But they're important with a lot of this stuff. So right now, Drip is sitting at $8.29. I think that's pretty cool. 
Um, it was down in the mid sevens. And of course, I think we got the bump here. Ray's been really doing a lot of work. He's putting a lot of thing in there. There's a lot of shillers out there with it. Um, if you follow me, you know my position and my feeling of drip. But, you know, I think it has a lot of issues, and a lot of health right now issues. And it's kind of like just, there's just a lot of things that are not favorable, but it does not mean it cannot work or sustain much longer. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying the truth of where it's at right now. So it's sitting at 830. It had a nice little bump. You know, the last time Forex had a talk, he really didn't get a bump in drip in Animal Farm, which I was surprised. But let's see if uh, this talk and this call can have a, a better um, bump on that because I do have some of my own strategy, my claim, compound claim, I've already been saying, working on ROI, I'm almost fully ROI um, in the piggy bank. So that's you know important thing there. So with that, you know, it's 830 right now on the platform. We are sitting at 772 here um, with pancake swap. You see some buys and some stuff coming in right now. Of course, getting ready. It's a you know decent buy, seven thousand right beforehand. You know, a lot of people trying to put, push it and bump it up a little um, before we run into them, before we get to the um, the forex ray filibuster because I'm sure that's going to be a long one um, and really you know kind of go. And I'm not going to be watching or covering the whole thing to be honest with you. I'm just going to get the highlights because I, I, I don't have that time to invest in that today, um, and that's not something I really want to get into today. But, you know, I will at least get the highlights. Um, but I got way different things I want to do, important things for me that I want to do. But I will be following it because I still want to cover it. So one of the things, of course, as you always know, and I cover with this is where is drip right now? And this is the problem I have. I mean, drip right now, you know, it's almost, I mean, 732,000 have minted. And we're talking about three months um, or maybe even less than three months. So let me give this a refresh just here, see where we are. Yep, that's another 12,000 that's minted. So we have almost 75% of drip has minted. So it's almost doubled its um, 1 million supply. So that is one of the reasons why I have an issue. There's no money in the tax vault. The tax vault is empty. So where is this extra money going to come from? So can today's help bring in some new investors of money? Maybe. Where is this CMO and stuff I keep asking about? Who is the CMO? Who are these marketing people who are going to help it? You know, I haven't heard any names. Um, give me a shout out. Let me know somebody. Give me a comment here. Anybody has any questions about that? Um, again, I love to chat with any of you. Anybody has something here to discuss or say or ask, please do. Um, but it's but my big issue here um, usually is that it's minting. And that's still going to be an issue because that's just that's just not what a healthy protocol is doing right now. I'm not saying, yes, it's been around forever. Yes, it's one of the kings out there, D5, with how long it's lasted. Yes, because of the group and the people who have built the community around and all that stuff. Yes, yes, yes to all of that. But the point of the matter is today, there's just some issues that need to be addressed. So let's see how they work with that. And one of the reasons with that is look here. This keeps going up. There is 922,829 drip in wallets. There's almost 1 million drip sitting in people's wallets when it's supposed to have a 1 million circulating supply. Why do you think it's minting so much? So how are we going to get liquidity? Is the Animal Farm is going to – I think the Animal Farm is going to give a Band-Aid. Animal Farm will give a Band-Aid. It will help people take that drip, pair it with BNB, or if they sell any, whatever they wind up doing, whether they add to it or they sell to, for BNB and pair it, whichever you know, route they go, park it. Um, in the farm to earn pigs. So I do see that as something coming. Um, we'll see what kind of tax Forex has on that drip um, BUSD. Uh, I, I know it's a tax on it. He, he even said he might increase it some. So we'll see how that works. But it's just concerning of how much drip there is in wallets right now and how much drip is total in all faucets and, and, and just counting and accumulating. So that's one of the concerns I have. And then if you come over here to Dune, let me take a look here how things are going, you know, some little extra sell pressure going on right now. Um, the biggest sells right now in the last 24 hours are right here. The biggest wallets, you know, the ones who are maxed out, who just basically have to, um, you know, they don't have to sell, but a lot of selling and also a lot of probably sitting in their wallet, whatever they're doing, whether they're airdropping to other wallets to start new ones, where they're waiting for the animal farm so they can do, as I said, and put it there to earn pigs. That's a huge possibility. Um, but that's something here I see that's that's most likely what's going to happen. And, of course, people who are not in the faucet is another huge seller. You can see here people who are in drip trading drip. So that's another big one there. These are some of the biggest wallets selling right now. So you can see this is all public knowledge, nothing major there. But one thing I'm going to do, of course, here is check on the vault. Where's the vault at? You know what I mean? Like, where are we at right now with this? And right now the vault is showing – just under 4,000 drip. It's right in the middle there, that box that just popped up. So, you know, it's 
a little bit better than it's been. Um, you know, it had it got away up to eleven thousand a couple of days ago or yesterday, which is surprising. I didn't know that. I didn't check it yesterday. To be honest, it was down to nothing the day before that. So eleven thousand was a positive move, but it's given a lot of it back, and that's why we're still minting. It's just more. There's more sell pressure, more sales selling than there is new money coming in or taxes coming in to sustain. And that's why I just fear, like, what's going to happen when drip hits two million? What time is drip goes over two million? There's just a lot with that there that's going to keep diluting. And the more it dilutes and the more things go on, it just, I don't know, the signs are just not very conducive for something that's healthy. Now, again, it could be healthy and they could turn it around and can re get some new things out. But I mean, the numbers are the numbers and the facts are the facts. Another big thing here I didn't cover last time, as I did cover over the weekend with drip, was Animal Farm. So with the Animal Farm, do I have that spreadsheet here? Yeah, so I have a spreadsheet here. So on the 12th, this is what I put down just to track. And this is as of today. So let's go here. So you get the piggy bank, pigs, LP. You know how many LP there are right now? It's been down 22%. So there's been more people claiming getting their pigs LP out of the piggy bank and either holding them or splitting the LPs or whatever they're doing. So that's been dropping. Um, drip LP has actually gone up. So that means more people are hydrating or compounding um, the drip garden. So that's also going to put more pressure on drip of the supply because there's a lot more people are building there as well because that's minting more drip and, and creating more. Um, so that's going to have an impact as I was just saying. That went up 9%. Pigs in the pig pen lock has gone up 4%. So about 10,000 more pigs have been put into the pig pen and lock for that 50-day lock where you could earn um, pigs in BUSD. Uh, the pig pen value itself has gone down about a million dollars, but it's about 5%. It's not a huge move, but a million dollars less than pig's value. But that's also because of the pig's price trading. Um, the price right now have been going down. And I always say for me personally, when I see this line going down, whenever I claim from the piggy bank, I sell my pigs. And when I see it turn up, if this trend goes up, then when I start claiming, I will hold it in my wallet waiting for another opportunity. I'll just ride the momentum up like I did last time, roll the momentum up here. I rolled some of this momentum here when it was going up, rolled some of this momentum here. I was I had said in previous videos. So when the momentum goes away, I start selling whatever I claim. And when the momentum stays, then I hold on to it, ride the wave until I see the next turn. When I see the next turn, that's when I start selling again. That's just my personal strategy. It's what I'm doing. I am not depositing any pigs into the pig pen. That's not what I'm going to be doing. And of course, when the animal farm does launch, I have my other strategies with that that I'll be doing as well. Um, to look to ROI from those, because we know right now with the taxes and all that stuff, and he might talk more about that or the LPs. Um, you know, someone even said in my Telegram group that they asked, um, I think it was yesterday, of why there's a discrepancy of what Forex said um, for the LPs um, compared to you know what he said in his messages and what's actually in the wallet. And of course, that person got immediately kicked out and banned from the Animal Farm chat. So the echo chamber doesn't want any questions. The echo chamber doesn't want any kind of stuff. You know, Ray asked for his soldiers and people to come in to keep footers out of the chat today, and and not have any kind of questions because they don't want they don't want anything. They just got to keep it in a small group. That's what I keep saying. There's such a smaller and smaller group who keep listening to all this stuff and keep feeling the same way, and that is what, in my opinion is why it's not growing. It's the same money just circulating, circulating. So where's the new money? Let's see if new money comes. I mean, it has a little bump today. Um, you know, 1.29% the last 24 hours, we're on a half percent in the last six hours. So we'll see what it said. We'll see if there's any kind of real alpha or any kind of real new things that are shared today. I'll be looking and hoping there is something, just no idea what to expect, of course, for that. But if I go back here, which one is it? Yeah, so the BUSD in the vault, that's gone down a lot. Uh, we know already how we're claiming, who's claiming from pigs, who's earning that BUSD, who has a lot of pigs in the vault that's kind of getting from that. So we already know that. That's been discussed many times. But as you can see here, you know, the BUSD in the vault, this is 79, 719. So pretty much the same there. So, I mean, the vault is, you know, it's down 41% that it's gone down um, for how much BUSD is there. So, you know, that's that's a little concern. You know, I know Forex has said he has a lot of um, money sitting the sidelines to put into the vault. He's always said that he said millions and millions is waiting to deploy. But, you know, that vault is kind of going low. And then the pig's price, you know, roughly give or take down. It's not too much there. But just want to make sure you had that. Give me one second. All right. So. Now that we've covered those, and we know that's coming up in the next 30 minutes with, with that, uh, one of the things here, start coming, so let's look at some other projects. Let's look at some other things out there 
Um, and, and again, anybody ask me something, um, give me a comment, give me a feedback, you know, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to have a question, say anything, you know, just it would be much appreciated. But one of the things that I am in that I've been in before half here is Ooze, Ooze Network. Um, I've done well with it. I've, I've already roi with it. Some people are asking my opinion of Ooze. I like Ooze overall. I like Ooze that it's tied to an NFT, not tied to your wallet, that you can sell it. That's been done already, what people said. So, you know, that's something there. But one of the things, of course, if you go here in the city and you click on stock exchange, my concern, of course, is the price. And I'm going to be totally honest. You know, the price here, when we had a look at a huge pump it had, I'm going to be totally honest. This price had a huge pump and was doing this. They said the same thing. I was compound claiming, compound claiming. You know, in my strategy, every time I claim, I let it sit and accumulate, 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 just build in my wallet. Went all up here and want to start turning. I said, this is what I'm going to start selling. And I started selling here and I've been just riding it back down. But this turn also happened with a lot of stuff and a lot of, again, I don't know if it's tied. I can't say it's tied, but it's just ironic that this is all goes together with what's happened with um, the whole thing with USDC. With the whole thing with the tornado cash and the U.S. and the feds trying to, you know, um, blacklist or watch certain wallets with tornado cash and USDC. And, you know, USDC is a product of Circle. Circle is funded by Goldman Sachs. And if Goldman Sachs has a lot of money in investing, one of their main investors is BlackRock. So whatever you want to agree, believe or not, you know, nothing we could do about it. But USDC is kind of a centralized coin, centralized dollar there that that scared a lot of people and they want to keep selling i don't know but the facts are that's just the facts so you know there's a lot of downward pressure someone was asking me you know hey what do you think about the price here what do you think it's a good time to get in you know it's kind of getting low here you know i'm thinking about wanting to buy and i say i always say listen of course can't give financial advice because i can't tell you when to buy when to sell it's nothing i can you know i can do but i said in this you know a, a, a term that that's very well known um in all investing is don't try to catch a falling knife. So if the knife is falling, don't try to catch it midair. Let it hit the ground first. So, you know, I saw this pump here. I said, oh, look, there's a nice pump. That's awesome. Let's see if it can reverse trend. If it reverses a trend then, and it starts doing this and it starts going the upside, then that could be a time. I'd rather see the trend reverse and then get in and miss the absolute bottom than get in too early because I'm just trying to make guesses. You know, and that was one of the big things is I don't want to make a guess. So this pump came here. It's been going down. You know, the pump. Now, I know they have some lot of cool things and videos coming out and some other stuff people are doing um, and some other um, YouTubers and, other, and things with that and, and the Telegram group. So I think the community as a whole is a good community. Um, right now, there's 3,100 players in it. Biopunks, total players, Orders of Slime are the ones who are there, TVL, etc. So I think there are some good things that this has potential with. And like I said, I'm still in it. I'm not looking, you know, I'm still going to keep growing and compounding and claiming. And yes, I have ROI, but I still want to keep growing my wallet size and keep growing from there. Um, the question is, where does it slow down? Where does it stop? So me personally, I'm not going to try to catch a falling knife. I'm just going to wait, see what happens with this, see where this turns around. And wherever this turns around, you know, we'll take it from there. You know, that's my just personal opinion on that. But I do think Ooze is a project on Phantom. The gas is pretty much almost free. I mean, I know it's kind of silly, but it's like almost free. That's like, It's like so little um, of how much it costs. So for you to, to use your XP points and for you to add to your NFT for either you want to add to your strength, um, whether you want to add to your speed. The strength means you start out at 8x of your deposit. So, you know, you can go up, you can get you max out at 8x of your deposit. Um, you know, it pays the three same 365, you know, like anything else does pays 1% a day. Um, you can also build your speed. You can use XP points to build your speed and get up to 2% a day. That's a possibility. Um, so you can do that. So that's something there that you can add. I've been adding my XP points personally, just to my speed. Um, I'm only up, you know, a little bit of, of you know, I'm, I'm up, but not in, no one near a 2%, but I keep using it to grow that part there. Um, and that's just my personal strategy. And it's helped me also ROI quicker. And that's why now I could be a little bit more, I could be a little bit more calm with it because, you know, in a couple of months now I've got my initial back. Now I'm playing with house money. And that's the whole point of this game is get your initial back, play with house money, build that wallet, build up that investment, take that initial back, find something else, find a new project, get it in there, get your initial back and just keep rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. If you can keep rinsing and repeating that, then you can have a lot of projects that you're basically in for free and you keep getting your initial back. That's the whole name of the game. That's the whole way to try to play this. And when the bull market does come, we don't know how long it's going to be till we get there and all the players and money comes flowing in again. 
you could be in a way better position if you're getting projects that you feel good about long term. Um, and this is the time when you buy. This is a time when you get in. This is a time when you want to build that up. So that's definitely a, a strong strategy there. What you, you know what to do. Um, I have here some different ones that I watch here and a lot of different charts that I like to watch. Let me take a sip here. I'm kind of got a little thirsty. I hope this is good information. I hope you guys are at least you know, whoever's here watching right now think this is enjoyable. I hope you're at least getting some value that can help you long term for your own strategy. I just want to cover just random things here. I want to grow with people to come in the chat. I want people to ask questions. I want people to give feedback. I want people to say, you know, I think you're right or I think you're full of crap. Whatever. Your sure choice. But you know, say something, let me know. That's how I want to keep building this. I haven't really shared this. I made this too big yet, but this is brand new. So it's just gonna keep little by little, just keep growing over time. All right, so we cover that. We cover that. E-share, like I said, is one that I like. I was in it. Yes, I'm a little early, so I'm down like 7 or 9% or whatever it was right now. But I still like it long term because it's tied with ETH and the project's tied to ETH. That's why I like it. And the E-share BNB wrapped um, farming. I don't do their detonator. I'm not into that for that project. That's not me. I don't like that personally. That's my personal opinion. I wouldn't be getting into it. I won't be joining it. So that one is not one um, that I have any interest in whatsoever. But I do like their um, their eShare wrap BNB farm. Um, and that's something here that I, I see long term once the, the market kind of bottoms out here and we start to move up, I think we'll do really well. This is eShare. You know, right now, sitting at that $400 price range, right now here with the chart, excuse me, I think it's um, looking good. But, you know, that's the whole point. I think we can really see this go much higher. Um, I, I want to see this up here. I mean, this thing got way up a long time ago. Let me see if I can just kind of come back. Look, look how high that chart goes. We're in the in the thousands. Um, and it's had a huge sell-off when the whole market came down, the market capitulation and things like that. So I can see personally, I think this, you know, for me, my goal here is getting here at these levels, seeing go to 800, maybe take some profit, hopefully get into the thousands again. And make a nice, nice return on ROI. And that's my personal goal when I'm looking to do there with that once that comes around. I'm still playing here, the orb, orb swap there, back and forth in their farms. Um, I know right now it's sitting there about, you see the, how it came back down, a little pump up right now. I know orbital swap, you know, they have some issues. They have some different things. Who was going to buy them? Who was going to not? I think they finally settled on Kyoto or however you say that. Protocol is going to be the owner now of this platform. So they're now going to own orbital swap. Um, Orb is their reward token, kind of like Cake is for Pancake Swap, um, but it's still paying a little over one percent. I've been playing it back and forth here, so you know I have to trade them in and out. The thing with this is you got to trade them. You got to be quick. You got to be fast. You got to watch. I like compounding, taking my Orb, splitting it fifty percent for BNB, putting it back in the farm. I kind of like just doing that little um, rotation there. Uh, so if I can get a nice pump, what I'm building there can get a really nice uh, profit. If we can get a nice pump here, coming back up. We get up back up here, this 40, 50, 60 cent range. Then I keep compounding and building there. That'll really, really, I think, have a, a nice pump there. Um, Avion, um, they have their LMS system. They're looking to keep the price stable on this price. So, so far, so good. They're able to keep it. Have little spikes here. But if you notice the downside, you know, the price here, this is a rebase token. I've already had been burnt from rebase tokens. Many of the people have been burnt from rebase tokens. I'm almost ROI on this as well because I do have an NFT. Uh, my NFT is helping me there for that. So my NFT with that has got me a good reward. You can Now, the thing about this is you can only sell maximum 1% a day. Um, so you cannot sell more than that. And and it pays about without an NFT about a little slightly over 1%. But if you have an NFT, you can get a one and a half up to 2%, a little over 2% a day. So that's there. And they do, like I said, their LMS is they want to keep the price stable. and a, to keep, They're looking to keep a price floor of one and a half. Then we'll let it get to two and a half on the upside range and then keep it as a floor of one and a half. So, so far, so good. You know, it's a lot. There's just a lot out there with these tokens. I get it. There's just a lot of things there that are um, people are just not feeling. And I totally understand. I got it from before. But again, so far, I've almost ROI. I'm really close. I think next week was today. Yeah, I think next week, probably Monday, I'll probably be ROI, maybe Thursday, because I, I sell on Monday and Thursdays. I have two different wallets that I'm in. And the reason why I do that is because if you get in it, you can sell 1% a day. However, if you don't sell for seven straight days, it automatically lets you know, gives you a clock. And then with that clock, it lets you sell one time 10%. 
So what I do is I just wait the whole week, let it accumulate, sell 10%. Whole week accumulate, sell 10%. So that's my personal strategy that I do with Avion. Um, I just come you that there. I'm going to come back to this one last, Furio. I'm going to skip it for now. Uh, Grizzly, same thing there. I was watching it. I saw how it came down. I mean, this thing really had, you know, huge run up, huge crash. And then once it got in here, I said, okay, now that it's kind of settled, this is now where I wanted to get in. So this is kind of, again, I'm playing a certain strategy. I'm trying something out. Let me put a couple hundred bucks, nothing really of anything to, to look look at, um, but or write home about whatever the hell you want to call it. But that's what I've done. So right now I'm playing this right here at this level and watching the chart and watching what this does here for that. So this is my just, you know, just keeping an eye, see how things are going um, and doing the same thing there. Elephant money. I'm not personally an elephant money. I'm not personally anything with bank teller. I even had someone make a comment in one of my videos. It was funny. They said I sounded like Bank Teller. I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if he's from the same area, grew up in the same area. or Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. Maybe someone can give me a comment or leave something after the fact and leave a comment in this video if you're not here live. But I was like, oh, all right. Well, that's news to me. But someone had mentioned and said that. So, But it is moving up. And there's a lot going on with that. A lot of people covering it. So I'm just, I just put it here for people who are attracted, people are in it. But again, I'm not in this myself personally. Um, the only thing I did a long time ago, and I'm still sitting on, is I bought some trunk. This was down all the way down to 25 cents. And I'm like, you know what? Bought some trunk. I'm sitting on it in my wallet, seeing if it ever gets close to par or close to peg again. You know, I'm, I probably won't wait the whole way. I'll probably, if I can get myself a good 30, 40, 50% double, you know, who knows how much, I'll probably sell it and just take my profit and run. But I do have some there just playing just for that possibility. See what happens. You know, that's what I'm thinking there. So, you know, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, Cairo, I'm also not in, but I have been watching it. Um, just, you know, the same thing here. You know, these all had that run up on the same time. This had a run up. Furio had a run up. Um, what can I think anymore? Ooze, they all ran at the same time. They all ran very close in time. I was like, man, they're all going at the same time. They're all pumping at the same time. So was it coordinating? Was it a coordinated thing to do that, to then take money to move to other projects? That's possible. You know, I, I, I don't know. I have no proof, but I just something that's possible. Um, but it's just interesting that they did that, but I'm not in that one. But I watch it now. So the down, it's a downward trend. So, again, I may want to jump in this. If it gets back down to that $1 range and starts cl closing back up, I might want to get into it. But I'm just going to watch. The yellow line here and this trend and this yellow line is my um, moving average that I have on there. See, the, see, whenever, see how this is? Look at elephant for a second, just as an example. I'm not in it, but just an example. Um, the yellow line, and both. When the when it's moving up and has positive momentum, the yellow line goes up and it just rides that line. It just rides it, right? You're just riding a wave. It just rides it, rides it, rides it. Starts flattening out. And then once it crosses and the yellow and blue line cross, that tells me that it's lost momentum and it's going to see some downward pressure. And that's when I say, okay, I'm out. That's when I make my decision to move. And right there, you can see it cross, came down. Right now, this is riding momentum. When that crosses, if you're in it, I would that me personally, that's what I do. I'm out. Um, same thing here. Same thing with Furio. I was pretty upset with Furio that I missed. This is just something else I'm tracking here. That million dollar baby and now called Make DeFi Better. That's a very interesting project, a very interesting thing. I put a little bit in it just to test it out. I um, mean, also test out their Phoenix. Um, let me just show that real quick here. Actually, let me just cover that. Some people I know are in it and want to know about it. This is all new to me with this. So I'm just, you know, got up to one cent. So it's moving up. Um, supposedly it's different ways of pressure and buy pressure for it to have only upward pressure. Um, there's a whole bunch I can cover with the white paper. Somebody, people want me to cover it and go into detail and, and explain it. I'm more than happy to, um, and just and give a video overview of it, but it just interests me. So I've just taken a look at it. Let me see if I can refresh this here. There we go. Um, MDB plus is kind of like their algorithm, algorithmic stable coin. So this here has 15% buy, I think a 15% sell. Um, and you know, again, it's supposed to have pressure to keep it always going up long term. It's not really paying an income, but it goes up long term. Then you have here their MD Plus, which is like their stable coin. And this one's interesting because they say that when you buy it, you pay a 0.75% tax to buy and a 0.25% tax to sell. And it says it's always backed by BUSD. So this says there's always more BUSD backing it than the actual tokens that are in circulation. So it's only supposed to have basically upward pressure and not go down. So this is the APY I've covered since launch in the last seven days average. Now it hasn't made 35% a day, but the last seven days it's average paying an annual APY of 35%. That's probably about 
32% turns to 35% APY, depending on how you compound, blah, blah, blah. But that's something here with that. So what happens is when you buy it, they mint it. And when you sell it, they burn them all. And then the tax goes in to buy more BUSD to make the vault even higher. So that, again, there's always more BUSD in there to help always putting upward pressures. This is supposed to only go up. I don't know. I put a little bit in this, put a little bit in that. I said, let me see what happens. I'm going to track it, go from there. Uh, Phoenix is their um, kind of their gameplay. This is kind of like that um, game theory. So Phoenix here is supposed to help with the pressure of this. And I can go into this much better detail. I'm probably not explaining it the best if you're not into it yet or haven't been into it. But the way it works is that you can see the APY that it pays. So you pay 2% to buy and you pay 2% to sell. So there's a 4% in and out. And this is the APY that it pays. And so you can see here it's paying, you know, over 1% a day. Now, the thing is, if there's certain kind of pressure or sell pressure, whatever, this Phoenix Plus kicks in. And when the Phoenix Plus kicks in, it basically burns all of this here and it helps. So this, so if so the way it works is you have to sell it. If you buy it and sell it and you make your APY and you get out before the burn feature kicks in, um, you know, think about the ride, right? A bird phoenix rising out of the ashes, right? Out of the fire. So if the phoenix rises and burns everything, everybody gets wiped out and gets clean if you're still in it. So you want to paying 6% total tax. There's an extra 2% tax for the phoenix basically selling it. But you don't lose the money. So if you put in $100 and let's say – the, the very next day you didn't earn anything yet and the whole thing got, got sold and got closed out, you would only get $94 back. You would lose 6%, but the 94 you receive would be MDB plus. If you sell it on your own, you only pay 4% tax, but you actually get back BUSD. So if you do it on your own, so the whole point is, is like, you have to, are you playing the game? How long do you want to wait before you sell? Do you want to get BUSD back where you can sell and have, not have any additional tax? You know, I make 15%. I sell with four, I, I walk with nine. This burns, sets, resets back to one. You get in again, you play the game. How long do you want to hold out before you burn? You know, right now it's up 23% since the $1. So eventually one day this is going to burn and whoever's still in it, you know, when you got in it, if you've been in it for $1 and you burn, hey, you still made a big profit. So you're still up, but it's just a, a whole different game theory here. So I want to play this one. I'm going to watch this here. I'm just going to wait till whenever it happens that the burn does happen. And then go from there. And then they do have some staking and some farming. Um, they're staking here. You have to have it in for 30 days, I believe. This is the APY. It's not going to be a large APY because of the supposedly the token supposed to be upward pressure only. Think of, they're trying to make it like think about holding a, a, a real regular coin where you're kind of staking um, and you're maybe you know putting it to a staking pool and you're not getting as much APY. That's kind of how the way they're looking to do it there. Farming. I like this here. This has a nice APY for farming. But right now, I still think there's downward pressure on BNB. So I'm going to wait. I believe BNB is going to go lower. And if BNB does go lower, I'd rather get in then than get in now and have this, you know, impermanent loss or things of that nature, the 200% that it's earning. So that's just me. Um, and lastly, bonds. The bonds here. This is basically if you really like BNB and you want to purchase it with no tax, you have to put 10 BNB in. So look, let's say about roughly $3,000. You have to leave it in for a minimum of 60 days. And if you do that, you can buy it with no upfront tax. Um, but they only have like one bond available a day or something. You have to watch this clock and be able to take advantage if you're going to do that. So just want to give a little coverage. I am going to look into this deeper. Um, again, I'm just playing some of these a little bit here, a little bit there, just trying to learn them, just trying to get a, more options out there um, in the DeFi space. So I just think it's something that's interesting. Um, you know, people talking about it. People think it's really something you can get into. Let me see what we got here. We got a comment here. Woo Crypto just said, yep, I'm getting into this. Been studying it for two months now. Um, that's cool. You mean MDB? If you've been studying MDB, I've been doing the same thing too. I've been watching it. I've been tracking it. And I've been trying to watch the chart, you know, on the chart. Where's the chart here? We'll go back to my chart. There's the chart here. I was watching it saying, okay, well, traditionally, this is a head and shoulders. Left shoulder, head, right shoulder. And traditionally, a head and shoulders what you do is you come across here a line, you take from the neck to the line here, and that's how much you normally would expect it to go down. So you go head, shoulders, so you'd cross, you'd measure this, and you would think the price should come down right here to about that candle, bottom of the candle, which is just under um, 0 0.0068 roughly. But it actually did the opposite here. I mean, it, you know, it did the opposite here. It started moving back up. 
it broke this little shoulder here. It has to break the head to really break the trend because um, it might be a double top. So we'll see if it hits a double top up here. That's possible. But it did give me a candle close above the yellow here, which is my 9 to 20 day moving average. That's the numbers I personally like to use. So with that candle close above, I'm like, all right, well, I'll take a little bit here and see what happens. And it might reach here and keep going. It might hit this double top and come back down to that range I was talking about. If it does hit that lower range, I will be adding to it. So that's what I'm waiting for there. So uh, thanks there. Hey, Money Mo Group. <laughs> group Crypto says, I'm from the Money Mo Group, and you apart so had to come. What does it say? And you apart so had to come show some love. Hey, thanks for the love, Woo Crypto. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Big shout out. Very much appreciated. So thank you for that. Um, no problem. So, yes, MDB is definitely one I've been watching and looking at here and just, you know, dabbling in right now. But I'm waiting for things to pull back. I have certain targets of things I'm waiting for. I'm just trying to be patient. I feel things that are come lower, and I'm just trying to be patient, just trying to be patient. Um, so lastly for this right now, I want to go into here is Furio. So Furio is a very, very interesting project. I missed this here, and I was like, man, I should buy it at 5. All right, I'm definitely going to buy it at 7. And I didn't. And it went all the way up, and I kicked myself in the ass for missing it. But I said, there's no way in how I'm going to chase this. There's no way in how I'm going to FOMO. Not going to do it. So I waited and waited and waited and waited. And now we're all the way back down to that $6 range. I was like, okay, cool. If I, again, I'd rather miss the absolute bottom. So it started to turn here. The trend changed. Um, I think I have it here in a bigger chart somewhere. I think I do. Let's see what we got here. And that's MDB. Here we go. So once the trend changed... And once it started, this candle close came above the yellow line. So, okay, now I'm looking to get into it. I want to get in here. I see the momentum changing. Now, they can turn it back down again. Anything's possible. We all know that. But I feel a little bit more comfortable here that I feel like things are finally starting to stabilize. I might stabilize within this range. So if you're not familiar with Furio, one of the things I like about it is there's different mechanics. There's a lot of different things that cover here, things that I wasn't aware of, things that they've improved upon with some of these ROI projects and other things that we've seen that are issues. Um, and then I have something that I'm going to have an exclusive offer first for my Telegram group. So if you want to join, you'll have a link, link to the Connect page, link in the description to join the Telegram group. I have something unique I'm going to do for them for a team building. Basically, as I said, I have an issue. And I know right now there's a lot of stuff people out there shilling, like with drip and all that kind of stuff. And it's going to go to 50. It's going to go to the moon. And last time you buy below 10 and blah, blah, blah. And all that stuff that, you know, this is going to help it get to 1,000, all that kind of stuff. And the biggest thing is they want you to join their team help them grow their wallet. And yes, I'll give airdrops and stuff. You know, some do, some don't, whatever. But the biggest thing, it's more of a benefit for them and less of a benefit for you. So I have something there that I have from someone in my group, my community, who's really helped me out. He, he's doing something to share with me. During the community, you can see there. He's really, um, we've been chatting a lot and talking. I've been asking questions about it. I like the idea and I want to try it. So this is something I want to try. I want to go into Furio. I want to try it here at this, at this, at this level now. And also the idea that I have for the team, I want to try. So this is a way for it's not just me or my wallet, but a team-owned wallet, meaning that you will earn rewards directly from that. And it's not just going to me as the shiller or me as a person growing it, but everybody is going to share in that wallet. So I want you to have some details. I'm going to record a separate video just for that. I'm only going to share that video first in my Telegram group. So if, you wanted, if you're interested in that and you want to join, then join my Telegram group. And I will share that in there for you to have first dibs on that. Um, I think it's pretty cool. I did the math on it. I took um, there's this spreadsheets and all out there for all these, you know, daily ROI platforms from Drip and this and that and Furio. So I took and I tweaked it to this particular project. I took time to build out a strategy for that particular wallet. And I think that wallet will really help people. Everybody can help ROI and everybody can earn and everybody can grow from that. And it's not just benefiting me. Anybody who's part of that, build a community together. We can all build together. We can all grow together. I want to do it with this project first. If this proves to be successful, then I'll start duplicating this for other projects or maybe make other ones for the same one because there's a cap on how many can be part of it. I only can have 30 people max on this particular first one. If it does well and more demand, I might want to open a second one. Um, and again, I can look, I can see this expanding into other projects and really giving back to the community and not just, oh, look at me. I'm going to cover this project. This is going to go to a thousand. Yay. Buy it here. Here's my referral link. I make money. I grow a big fat wallet. I get paid and you may do well in the wallet, but you know, what extra benefit are you getting? What extra is coming to you? How are you also benefiting? Not just from learning about it, 
but you know, a way to give back, a way to everybody equally share in that. So I'm really excited to share it. Um, I'm going to go into detail of it with the, with um, with that project and with that there. And I want to be starting something different than just showing a project for me. I'll show a project for me, but also in a way that it helps the project. It gets more people aware of it. But then a way, if you want to join this, we all share and we all win together as a community. So I think that's something that's really cool. And I am going to share that there. And I have you know the white paper here. I don't know if you're familiar with Furio. Um, but one of the things I like on this, and I'll, I'll cover just a few things before we get here to kind of get ready to wrap up a little bit. Uh, let me scroll down here, man. You know, I'll be honest with you. I want to do these live things. Are interesting, but man, it's, I, I didn't realize how much effort it is to talk nonstop by yourself to a microphone live. I mean, that's definitely interesting. It's something I get more and more used to and more and more to talk. So I try to fill in the air and not make dead air and just cover things and talk. So definitely want to, you know, give a lot there to everyone. And I hope again, you guys are all getting value and making it worth your time to come here, scroll through this, whatever. So I'm going to scroll through lots of other stuff. You can read through it. I'm going to cover it there a little later. So there's a couple of interesting things. Yes, they have the whale tax. Everybody has their whale tax there. But there's some stuff pretty similar, the same as Drip, the same as, you know, some of the other ROI platforms. They all pretty much copy the same thing. Bankroll Flow is the first one, um, you know, so <clears throat> they all kind of copy the same stuff. But this is where things to me get interesting. And this is why I like some of the mechanics about it. So the buy tax is 10%, but if you buy and you deposit instantly through the through the um, DAP, they do waive this. So you just get a 10% deposit tax, 10% claim, 10% sell. This is all the same. The differences I like is, you know, airdrop 10%, compound 5%, all the same here, transfer 10%. But so that's kind of common. This is kind of common stuff, common knowledge, nothing too difficult here. I'm going to go into some more detail in that video. If people who want to know about Furio will get into it. Some of you may know it. But I want to point out some of the other things I like. So some of the other things I like is this. Any wallet that's looking to sell fur tokens and has no fur in the vault, you get a 50% sales tax. So they don't want people buying the token and just holding the token and just selling it for a jump. So let's say you buy it at five, it goes to 20, you sell and make $15 on the coin. They're going to go, okay, but half of that's come back to us. You're not really making 15, you're making seven and a half. Still not a bad payday if it goes that high like it did. But from my understanding, they're going to be implementing now an LMS system, a liquidity management. I believe they're going to get it from Horde. Again, I'm going to double check on some of these things. I feel very confident that's what's going to happen. Um, but I like that they have that tax. That to me is real. I, I, this to me helps people manipulating the token. It also helps like me. I like to some, not that I'm going to have 50% or, or none in the vault, but I'm going to go into the second part here. So that tax right there is huge to protect against pressure. As you saw when I was showing how much people are selling drip right now who are not in the faucet. Let me see. Let me go back here. Let me go back here. Which one is it? Right? All these sales are not in the faucet. They could take advantage for whatever reason, whatever they were doing. Did they buy in the low four or fives? I don't know. Um, but that's just something to keep an eye on. And then the second thing is any wallet looking to sell fur tokens where the sell token the sell tokens is greater than 25% of what you have in the vault, you also get a 50% tax. So if I have 100 in the vault and I want to sell 100 tokens in my wallet that I've been accumulating just waiting on, if I, that's too much. So I will get hit with a 50% tax. The most I can sell is 25. So if I sell 25 of those tokens, I get my normal 10% tax. If I sell more than that 25%, they're going to smack me with a 50% tax. So again, they're trying to keep some anti-dumping and some whale mechanisms. So I think that's pretty cool. You know, I do like to hold my token some when I see the price going up, but I will have to be very careful. And really much just check on um i have to really play the game and play the math properly make sure i don't get crushed if i try to do that hey uh lou appreciate that let's go appreciate the shout out appreciate the love the like everything thank you very much for um leaving a comment hope you're subbed and i hope you're liking the information so thanks for that um so you know i do i like those two mechanics i think that's going to help the long term of the protocol um, and then another thing, of course, is that is to have something with, the, with their fur pool, which is does at the reservoir, things like that. Well, I hear you, man, with the Furio. Absolutely, man. I'm all in there. If you want to have interest, if you want a separate wallet, very small entry, I can explain it to you a way to really earn on top of it and help you ROI a little bit more. So if you're interested, definitely join the Telegram group. I'll explain that there in a video I'm recording pretty much right after this. I'm going to make that, take a quick break, go into detail of that video, go into detail of my idea and how I want to make a community all share and grow together. 
So if you want to be part of that, you're more than welcome. So I'm going to offer to them first. And again, it's going to limit to 30. If I get more demand or more people to build, I might continue to build going forward. And I think it's a good idea. And I think it's something different that you're not going to hear other shillers, other YouTubers sharing. So shout out to Jim. I appreciate that feedback on that um, very much for the idea. And I kind of put my own spin and my own tweak on it that I'm going to share. But going into here, one of the other parts is, you know, this is their fur pool. You can earn up to 50% APY, you know, 10% in, 10% out, kind of like the reservoir, like for um, drip. But one of the other things here, and I'm going to skip this for now, again, if you're in it, is this. This is what I like. I like how they pay out. I like this whole structure. So when you are when you get in, anybody new, you start at 6-1, meaning six days compound, one day clean, and you earn 1.75%. That's where you start. And what's happened is, um, what's happening with the ooze price? Um, hey, Plum Plum, um, I will go back to that in a second. I have some more coverage of that. You know, I'm not exactly sure if it's just people, a lot of profit taking. I'm not sure, again, if those people are just fearful of USDC. Um, like I said before, I'd be happy to go back and check it again or even cover it in the future and dig a little deeper and see what I can learn from you. So I'm happy to do that. Just not exactly sure. Um, but I will look into that. But again, I want to just cover this here and finish this one part first. So the thing here with this is I like the mechanics. <clears throat> so everything to them, they count over 20, rolling 28 days. So you start at 1.75% you earn, and this is how much you get there. Now, if you don't claim at all, and you've built yourself up after 28 days, you'll jump to 2.5%. So you can earn 2.5% every day if you're not claiming, if you're just compounding, compounding, compounding. Now, when you the minute you start to want to claim again, you're going to drop to these other levels. So if you if you do a 6.1, you drop to 1.75. If you drop to a 5.2, you drop to 1.25. And as long as you're still positive, as long as you're compounding each week, you know, if you have, as long as you have 16 compounds in the last 28 days, basically when you're averaging four compounds, three claims, you'll at least stay at 1%. But if you're looking to go 50-50 and you're looking to go negative, you drop all the way down to half a percent payout. So that's a huge difference of how they're trying to protect the protocol for people. Like if it's just paying 1% every day, every day, no matter what, everybody gets 1%, or if it's just paying the same um, you know, 2% or one and a half or whatever the, that project's um, mechanics are, and it's flat and it's static and it doesn't move, it's not dynamic, then that's one of the issues I thought that, you know, could have some downward pressure and have some issues. So I like that you can't sell if it's not in your wallet. So if you want to airdrop yourself the fur tokens because you want to get avoid, avoid whale taxes, there are people who do that in other projects. I've mentioned that before. You can't sell it. Because you're going to basically hurt yourself in that one. So you're going to have to find a way to deposit or do some other things. If you have more, if you're trying to sell more than 25% than what you have in the vault at the time deposited, 50% tax. There's lots of different taxes there for playing the token. So I like that. Um, and I like this dynamic here. So you get rewarded for lots of compounds. You get rewarded for really trying to build your wallet. And hey, as long as you're net positive, 1% a day is amazing, right? I mean, that's what's done amazing for Drip. It's done great for a long time. 1% a day has made tons of people lots and lots of money. So I like that. I like these mechanics. I have a strategy for that wallet I'm going to do there. I really, really feel it's going to be like an amazing thing. I really i am just excited about it. I want to build this here because I want to give back to everybody else. So it's not going to be about me. Yes, of course, I'm going to participate in it, but the majority of it's all going to go to everybody else. I'm like more than majority. I mean, everybody's going to equally share um, in the amount there. And I'll definitely give those details. But I think if you want to join small entry, I think it's going to be like 30 for like 250 bucks, max 30 people. And I really want to build that there and explain it. So again, I like a lot of this here. I like the compound. I like the mechanics. So I'm pretty much excited about it. I know we're about to start here. I know Ray and Forex are starting again. I'm not going to personally cover it. I'm just not. It's just going to be too long, too much of the same stuff, nothing personal. I do not like listening to Ray talk and Forex and all that. And I, I, I just can't deal with that. That's just, you know, that's me. I have my own thing. I don't really. My personal opinion is should be well known by now, but I'm trying to be as objective as possible because a lot of stuff they just don't do and just don't like. Um, I will look into this again. Plum, plum, do you match the question? I'll see what I can find out about it. I just really think it's just a lot of downward pressure. I really, really feel the price a lot of it is just maybe people just not want to be in USDC. Maybe people are just hitting the hitting the road and it's taken off. I'll see what else I can find. There are people that I talk to who definitely do cover this a lot more. You know, I'm in it, but I'm not in it like day in and day out living it to know all the reasons, all the mechanics. They're really trying to put some 
some different things here to buy, really some different things to grow. You know, it was growing pretty good when it first was building up a lot of momentum. It did really well when it launched in June. So it's been holding its own there, uh, but not exactly sure. So my send off here is I think I've had my time for now. I'm going to be kind of wrapping up if somebody has a question or anything there or any kind of comment is let's see if the price goes here. It's had a bump so far. Let's see what happens there. Let's see what happens. Let's see where we are on drip right now, 1744. Nope, hasn't had any more minting since my last, re excuse me, since my last refresh. Right now, how are we looking at hydrate claims? Let's check that out real quick here. Um, 80,000 claims to 50,000 deposits. Again, it's still negative. This green line is still every day, except for a couple of blips, as you can see. It's still not enough deposits, claims, which is why it's been minting. You know, not very much in the vault, as we already know. Um, let's see how we're doing on the price with that stuff there. Let me just wrap up here. Where is my window? There we go. So Animal Farm hitting right now about 76 peak. Let's see what this is at here. You know, if I can see a bump here, I may again hold my pigs token and ride the wave. I just, I use this. This is my indicator. This is how I personally watch charts. Join late. Do you think we'll get a firm date? Let me see what it said here. We got join late. I think we get a firm date for Animal Farm launch tomorrow. It was supposed to be. I thought it was today. I thought Ray's supposed to be today. The um, filibuster. I, I, he said join us tomorrow, and he wrote on the 29th. So I thought it was supposed to be going on now, from my understanding. Um, I could be wrong, but I could have sworn he said it was supposed to be today. Um, from his last update from Forex. Let me see if there's something going on there. What we can do. Um, blah 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 blah. I'm looking right now in my Telegram. Give me a second if there's anything here that I'm missing. I sure as heck won't listen. Let me see. Yep, join us in the next few minutes at 5 p.m. for the roadmap. Join us in the VC. I can't join the VC because I've been kicked out, and I'm no longer in those groups, and I am banned, and that is totally okay by me. But it is supposed to be going on right now. And, again, Forex is supposed to give a date for mid-October. So whatever day he gives Ray, he promised Ray um, the date, whatever, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that one alone, um, but it's supposed to be today. He's going to be announcing it. So it's supposed to be, let's say, in the next six weeks. From my understanding, what he said before, whatever date it is, the next six weeks. I can tell you right now, Forex loves Tuesdays and Thursdays. Okay, those are his favorite two days to launch projects, Tuesdays and Thursdays. So let me look at my calendar real quickly here, and I'll make my own guess. I don't even know if he said it here or not because I'm not even in the group. I can't be in the group, so it's not like I'm cheating. But let me just look at my calendar here. My guess is going to be the 11th. 10 11 is my guess. Maybe 10 18. I don't know if it's going to go that far. It might be 10 18. But my guess is 10 11 or 10 18. Fur bet, I'm not sure yet, but I'm digging right now really deep into that. I'm really digging to Fury right now. I'm really like doing my research and really digging in. I want to build like that with this right now. So, you know, this is something I really want to see. Um, I'm really going to learn about this. I'm going to dive in and spend a lot of time diving in, talk to people who have a lot more knowledge than me to get a quick um, catch up and then just keep diving and diving and listening and watching as much as I can. Um, what do you say, Lou? <laughs> I asked a question in the drip group and got banned. My telegram group was basically created. I mean, I started it first before then, but then I really took it off. And what I was saying in all my intros of videos is that everyone who's been banned from telegram, from animal farm, a drip, Join my group, come talk, ask questions, have concerns. Let's discuss it. Let's talk about it. I may say that from the very beginning. That's why the group kept growing. That's why all of us keep talking questions. That's why so many people are in there. You can freely ask questions. I've had people who even don't like what I have to say. People even going coming after me in my own group. And I give them some leash. Yesterday I had it for the for a second time only. I've only banned two people on my Telegram ever, ever. And if you're in there and you to ask anybody, you can see they were both well-deserved. But I had a... Um, but when they, hey, Lou, no problem, I'll make sure you have the link. Um, it should be in the description. If it's not, I'll update the description to give it there. So I'll make sure you have that. Thanks very much. Um, but I let anybody talk, and only when they really, really attack or gets really, really, like, bad, when I finally have to make the decision to ban someone that I've done it. I've only done it two times. Um, so I let people talk. I let people get in there. I'll go back and forth and debate you. You bring your facts. I bring my facts. You may be right. I might be wrong. I'm willing to admit I'm wrong, but I'm willing to go and, and have those heated discussions because that's healthy. I think it's healthy to have those kind of discussions. So no problem, Lou. Thanks. I'll uh, make sure you get that. Um, so I think they're healthy. So again, let's see if you get a bump. Let's see if you get the Forex bump. Last time didn't really happen with his thing with Mike. That one really didn't go well. I know 
Ray is going to really want to say that his channel, his Bar of Town group and his squad and all that kind of stuff he really wants to do is going to push and really he wants to show a big push on this. So let's see if he can let's see if he can him and the whales can kind of push some of the price here and try to create a little FOMO because that's going to try to do. Here we go. See, this is the whale buy right at the launch here. That's basically trying to pump the price. That's what they do. They want to create that FOMO, create that excitement. This is what's going on. $9,000 buy, you know, buying 9,000 BUSD. This is exactly what this is. Try to create that pump, create that hype. And Hey, I'm going to take you buy it up, buy it up because you know what? All these buys, what it's going to do, it's going to help the price go higher for what I have, help me ROI faster, help me earn more, and help everybody earn more. So pump it up, do whatever you want there. Good for you. So I think I'm pretty much done here. I'm going to keep in a shout out there. Also, if you want to join, you can even join to support the tele, I mean, my, my YouTube channel again as well. I really hope and really would ask you just number one, subscribe. Let's get to 1100 here. Subscribe, hit the like button, leave me a comment. Leave me a comment because the more comments help the algorithm get it out. Leave me a comment if you're watching this afterwards on a replay. Definitely do so. Give it a like. Subscribe. Let's get this to 1100 here. And then also you can join for only a 10 cents a day if you want to support the channel. And I'm looking for creative ways to give back. I've already given way back on this one. Um, again, not financial advice, but just showing what I'm doing. If anybody's you know doing that for their paper trading and for their just for observation educational purposes, more than giving back already, and continue to do that for different levels. So everything's there. Appreciate all of you. Thank you very much for all of you tuning in. Again, I am not going to be listening to this right now, but I am going to get the highlights. So if any of you listening, maybe you can leave me a comment and let me know what's going on or what's being said, because I can't listen in anyway. Um, I can go on somebody else's YouTube channel, someone else's stream and listen, but I'm not planning on doing that. So I'm going to cover my Furio thing. I'm going to get my video recorded for that after a short break. Make sure I release it to the Telegram group. Make sure if you want to be that, join. I would love to have you in there. Hope you all have a great time. Hope everything works out for all of you. I wish everyone, of course, as always, I'm signing off here, success. I want just, I just really want everyone to ROI, do well, not get wrecked. Find ways to use these systems, use charts, use platforms to make yourself money for your financial freedom, for your own wishes, whatever you want to do in your life. As a sign off here, as always, here is to your success. <laughs>